With a title like Revenge of the Ninja, it suggests there should be some revenge, like getting back at someone or killing someone for doing something wrong to you, right? Revenge of the Ninja is a 1984 video game released by Taito in the arcades. It tracks the similar path as games like Dragon's Lair, Space Age, and Road Avenger. Simply put, you watch a long ass video, in this case an anime, and push the corresponding buttons that appear on screen. I have never seen this game pop up at my arcades. Maybe because I was busy playing other stuff like Operation Wolf, Road Blasters, and Afterburner in the arcade when I was young. It got ported to many other CD based consoles like the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. In this review, I will be talking about the Sega CD version, released in 1993. Hmm, does this game seem familiar to you? While playing, I had a few questions. Why would you make an FFV game of a subject like this? I mean, clearly this should be like a 2D platformer, with all the cool stuff that's happening. A bit like Ninja Gaiden on the NES. I snapped my fingers and I got it. Remember the video that the angry video game nerd made a while back ago? It's Legend of Kage or Shadow in Japanese. I swear, look at these characters. They are exactly designed the same way. I did some digging and read the wiki page, scrolled all the way down and there it was. So they did make a 2D platformer after this FMV release. Nice. Revenge of the Ninja is one of the earlier FMV games, where you control what's on screen by pressing the right button. The story revolves around a ninja called Hayate that needs to find and rescue a nameless princess from the clutches of some demon. That's all you get as far as a storyline, and it's a shame that there isn't more depth to it. You get thrown into the action from the second you start the game and get no character development. You don't see the princess being captured, the relationship between characters, or who actually captured the princess, and why. It's all fuck it, let's go. You maneuver Hayate through 18 stages of the most random settings. There's no connection between any of these stages. Hayate gets himself in tight situations, and all you need to do is help his ass out of each one. To be honest, for a ninja, Hayate is a complete pussy. He doesn't really fight almost all of the time. He avoids slashes, projectiles, hops from object to object, or takes cover. It makes me wonder about 2 animation their intent. Is this supposed to be like a serious or mildly funny anime? I always thought that Medusa would turn you into stone if you look straight at her. Fuck it, out with the rule book. Hayate throws a bomb at her and runs away. All this dude does is run away. Every stage ends with Hayate running away. It doesn't add to his heroism. The man is clearly in a hurry and does time management. One thing that does help is that you as a player can see what's happening. You move left, right, up, down, or push the action button, which is any button, to logically interact with what's happening. Not like in Wirehead, with a camera that flies all over the place and that fast MTV 90s editing. I fucking laughed out loud every time Hirate got killed. It reminds me of something like Samurai Pizza Cats, with that weird out animation. As any FMP game, this is another round of Simon Says, or a trial and error game. You die, remember what went wrong, succeed and die again. There he goes, running away again. Not even worrying about the fact that that samurai master could just go after him. Fuck it, when you run away, everyone else behind you immediately ceases their attack next to new music being added in this game for the Sega CD version. It also feels if the voice acting has been dubbed over into English. There are times when characters don't move their mouth and have an audio clip, like they are randomly placed there to make it more tense. Any voice acting is extremely poor, with the voice actors not being immersed in their roles. A problem a lot of 80s and 90s cartoons have. No way back. I call this dude No Way Back. Because that's all he says. No way back. At stage 9, Hayate finally shows some cojones and kicks the fuck out of some people. Thank god. You fight another ninja, yada yada, come across ceiling monster watching you fap, go up and fight the same ninja with the exact same animations and do the exact same jumps to avoid his projectiles. How about that for rehashing animation to full extent? So shit breaks, the ceiling tends to collapse, and Hayate runs away! How this all is connected is not important. You won fair and square from this robotic beast and now it's your time to shine. So run away ninja boy! Then you fight against a rotten and senior Vega, and somehow fall down the wooden floor to end up in a water stream. And Hayate constructed while falling down 
some wooden foot pedals. Who would ever build such a castle with all these traps and monsters? The maintenance costs would be enormous, let alone the staff costs and health plans. This is the best scene in the game. You need to fight off these wolves and one manages to grab Hayati's sword. You can't make this shit up. He tries to stab Hayati with his own sword while the rest of the wolves pin him down. Fucking hilarious. Whenever Hayate gets killed, one of the wolves just gets up in his face. It looks like he's licking him. Ah, so cute. I wish Hayate had a dog he could pet in the game. That would be awesome. Instead, he runs away again. Then you fight against some hordes of skeletons that regenerate after being chopped. So the best thing is to run away? Good job, Hayate. You go through the mandatory scene full of machinery, conveyor belts, lava and pressing machines. What is even produced in this castle? Does the main villain have a side job? Manufacturing Teslas? Eventually you find the princess, only to be thwarted again. Hayate only avoids getting stabbed and then... You guessed it. You face the final boss in this seriously cool battle, which would actually be even cooler if you could actually control it. The boss transforms into a three-headed dragon and Hayate finally uses his sword to do some awesome shit this time and stabs the dragon in his head. The dragon gets randomly electrified by a lightning bolt. The whole place falls apart. Hayate flies away with the princess and the journey is over. But not before I had a fucking burst of laughter. Okay, so the music is so out of tune. Who gave the clear and said, yeah, this sounds terrific. It all ends with distortion. And then as you fill out the name for your score, is Revenge of the Ninja worth picking up? It gives the 2D characterization of Hayate and the princess a 3D face, but doesn't do much story-wise, which misses the mark in my opinion. The developers, together with Tui Animation, could have developed a better franchise with some plot development and character depth. Instead, you are left with a flat game, which does nothing more than other FMV games. Even more, this should have been just a full-fledged anime. The animation is dated, but there's some heart in here, which warrants it. Therefore, Revenge of the Ninja is fun for one playthrough, but not for a second, as the game doesn't change up its gameplay. The only thing that validates that second playthrough would be to boast about it at friends, and even they might wonder, why don't you play Road Avenger instead? This was the 19th episode of In Retrospective, the series where I place older games in this time frame. Did you like this episode? Well, tuck yourself right in and have a marathon with the other ones in the playlist. Give this episode a like and subscribe if you liked it and be notified whenever a new episode is released. And see you on a next episode of In Retrospective. No!